Leo friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Leo March 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month for Leo, Flying Lions, Time to Soar, and we'll get into all of the details as to why. This is for you if Leo is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Leo placement that you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Leo friends, so birthday is like around August 15th through the rest of the sign, or Leo placements around 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Virgo report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. Well, it's great to, I guess, be seen by you. It's been a long time since I've been on camera, so hello. Um, if you haven't, if you've just joined my community over the over a year or so since I've been off camera, then hello, nice to meet you <laughs> and virtual hugs to everybody. So um, March is a big month. We've got an eclipse in March. We have an eclipse in April that will be influencing in March. And we've got lots more to talk about. As usual, my intention for you is to help you align with the natural rhythms of the universe. That is the premise of all of my work. And I love to layer in your education so that you understand the different factors that are affecting this month to give you a really rich, juicy picture of the energetics so that you can make the best choices and have the best experience. That is my hope for you. So I'm going to go into all the layers that make, uh, I think, the most important um, levels or, or factors of this month, and we'll take them piece by piece. The first important thing to know is we have more than double the sweet aspects compared to the salty ones this month. I call salty aspects the ones where they're mathematically incongruent and they tend to cause ruckuses. So we don't have a lot of actual aspects period this month. It's not as busy a sky from that perspective. And the ones we do have are mostly sweet and we'll talk about some of those towards the end. The next thing to know is that March is a hybrid month where the first three weeks are very different than the last 11 days, okay? And that's because we're still in that glorious open period free from personal planet retrogrades that began January 21st and goes through March 20th. And so for the first three weeks, we're still in that cosmic green light phase. You can see if you search for cosmic green lights, Annie Botticelli, you'll find my report on the fact that the outer planets are also direct as of January 27th and what you can do with that. And all of those things are, you know, are really on track, um, especially here in the first three weeks. Now, the period of time that the outer planets are going direct, January 27th through May 2nd, of that window, only until March 20th are we free from the personal planets also starting their shadow period for retrograde, okay? So there, that it does make a big difference and you will notice it. So for the first three weeks of the month, gung-ho, you know, put your messages in a bottle, anything you want going out to sea, you're basically flying, you know, hopefully not too high over the speed limit, but on a highway, maybe you're on the Audubon and you're just racing through and, you know, without obstacles for the most part and just going, going, going. And then once we get to March 20th, what I like to liken this to is you slow down to make a U-turn. So the shadow period, so basically, you know, for March 20th into early April, the shadow period is when you're doing the awkward slowing down and having to change lanes. So you will feel this in that turn at that part of the month where you're going super fast and you're like, oh crap, I have to turn around. And then you have to slow down and change lanes. And then when we get to the retrograde in April, you're like stalled out waiting for the, the traffic to clear on the other side to go to go the other way. And then afterwards, you getting back up to speed will be the post transit shadow period towards the end of April. And then we'll fall, you know, that will be our whole rhythm. But you know, there are very important distinctions. So basically, you want to take advantage of these first three weeks in March, because we don't have a lot of free open periods, um, free from personal planet retrogrades this year, because we do have a Mars retrograde towards the end of the year. And that shadow period is long and it rules action. So you're not likely to have a more rowdy time. There may be, actually there's one other period of time this year that there will be a lot of fire and a lot of forward movement and that's going to be around Leo time. So, um, but we're not there yet. So make the most of it is the point. Now, what are the things you wanna do at this time? Big decisions, moves, big employment changes, engagements, weddings, big gatherings, big trips that you want to go as smoothly as possible. You know, anything having to do with big sales, big purchases, um, investing, signing contracts, making commitments, you have much better energy about with that, those things the first three weeks. And then we start to kind of slow down and you'll have to move your, align your energy away from the big vision, the big story, the big agenda, 
down to, oh gosh, I have to fix that in my house. Oh dear, this, you know, the dog needs this thing. And you know, like all the things that you've kind of have accumulated that you need to do more closely to you, those things are, you know, kind of like on a day-to-day -day basis or just simple repairs or maintenance. You know, it's a little bit more of drudgery compared to, um, like the free open, like, ha, oh, let's go and do everything. But I did say it's your time to soar and there are going to be opportunities for you to travel far and wide. And we are going to get into that, but I'm just talking right now about the energetic of the change with Mercury because you will notice it. So the first three weeks of March, throw your bottles out in the message, message in a bottle out to sea, get your boat off the deserted island. The tides will take it out far and wide for that time as of March 20th. Anything you want to go far and wide, Hopefully you did that already because now anything you throw back March 20th and after will come right back to you. Okay, so it's perfect for some things, short term things, playing catch or, you know, playing, you know, um, fetch with a dog, like you throw it out and it comes back. Those kind of kind, you know, things like that will be great for the latter part of March. But if you're wanting something to go far and wide, you might not want to toss it out towards the end of March. That is going to be the time to be the spider, stay in your web and let food come to you. First three weeks, time to make things happen. And, you know, after the 20th, a time to let things come to you and wait for last minute magic. Also regarding scheduling, even things just like dentist appointments and things you have to schedule, you'll have a much easier time being able to follow through with appointments if you schedule them through around March 20th. After that, since you know you can't get a hold of anybody on the phone anymore, at least not in the United States, to try to cancel or make an appointment. So you're going to spend a lot of time changing appointments if you have to set a lot of appointments March 20th and in April, okay? Now, if they're emergency, you have to do them, and you, you, you can't get out of it. But if you can help it, your scheduling will be much easier if you do it in the earlier part of March. Okay, so we will get to the eclipses, but I wanna build up to that by first talking about the movement of the personal planets. We still have a lingering of Mars and Venus in Aquarius. And for Leo, this is intense and notable because they oppose your sign. So let's break down the layers. The first layer is that we have a lot of energy in Aquarius still. So this brings community mindedness, community projects, teams, uh, anything having to do with internet based projects, you know, yourself as a member of a tribe, you working on something for the greater good, anything like that, that's group related, futuristic thinking, technological, all of that's happening. And we've got Venus and Mars there. It's a beautiful blending of energy, action and nurturing, you know, all of it's in the same place. And for you, as a Leo, this is actually your partnership house. So you could have a great meeting of the minds. You could be really working well with a romantic partner. You could have romantic opportunities with your work. And this, if you want new love, the especially the first three weeks of March is fantastic for cementing in a new meeting with someone. So if you're dating, um, Aquarius also rules networking. So networking for your business or your personal um, or a hobby or anything that you're trying to do, a project, networking is going to be very key, especially in the earlier part of the month. And relationships are going to be of main focus and that's not going away. You have Saturn in your eighth house, which is the other partnership house. You have a full eighth house, which is your second partnership house, which we'll get to. So, you know, the theme of partnerships and relationships is not, is not leaving. You have so many layers here, but it will move out of the seventh house. All right, and that, that, that will be happening. So let's see what the, yeah. All right, so then as Mars and Venus move out of Aquarius, they join the Pisces party, all of those energetics in the eighth house, Saturn, the sun, Mercury, Hygieia, Neptune, Mars and Venus will be there too. That's a lot of weight in one sign. That's a lot of weight in one house. Let's look at how that can manifest. Of those things I mentioned, Saturn and Neptune are long-term transits. So they've been there for a while. They're going to be there for a while. The other ones are short-term transits, so they're crowding in to have a message, to have an experience at this time. They're having a party, and the tone of the party is Pisces. So we've got strong, strong, strong energy of high emotion, adaptability, compassion, spirituality, intuition, and spiritually connecting with others. Because this is in your eighth house of partnerships, it's speaking to this very deep connection with other people, this very spiritual connection with other people, could be this very financial connection with other people where you're working on something together financially, and you will have a lot of storylines involving estates, estate planning, wills, um, investments, borrowing money, paying off money, things like that, or loaning someone money. So kindness and empathy, 
or lack thereof. These are topics that may come up. All this Pisces energy can bring indecisiveness, escapism, and procrastination. So with all of this energy saying it's time to move and go and do things, then you've got this counterforce that's saying, oh, but maybe we should overthink it. Oh, let's, you know, there are so many choices. I don't know what to do. And there, you know, that's the, that's the negative part of the spectrum of Pisces. The, you know, the higher part of the spectrum is it's spiritualizing, intuitive, synchronistic, and, you know, it's just all the magic of the all that is. And then when we drill down to the lower vibrations, you could be overwhelmed by options. You could be overwhelmed by emotion or someone else's emotion. Uh, you could be overwhelmed by the money situations or whatever's happening. And so you might have to push through. So the way that I'm suggesting we balance this is with inspired in action. Inspired action, not inspired in action. <laughs> so like divine, divinely inspired action. With all of this intuition, it makes the odds greater that if you're asking yourself, oh gosh, should I move? And then a truck comes and says, time to move. It's like it's called a waking dream. You know, it's like they're... The, the synchronicities can be strong at this time. The more that you look out for it, the more that you ask for it, the more it can be there. So if you ask for help or support, the business of asking may be what make more likely makes it show up. And then taking only the actions that are really inspired and really feel right rather than every different action, that could be a good way to use this combination of energetics. Okay, so let's talk about the eclipses and this is really what I'm focused on for the theme of this month because of all the things we talked about as important as they are the eclipses are like you know they're they're really really in our faces they're they're working along karmic lines they have to do with clearing out old belief systems welcoming in new ones clearing out energy that was happening before and bringing in new energy sometimes it's stuff that we wanted a lot major manifestation period of time sometimes it's stuff we wanted to keep and we don't get to and it's non-negotiable and it sucks and that's just the way it works eclipses have a rhythm and understanding that rhythm can help you to move through the process consciously from the end of 2023 to the end of 2025 we started an aries labor eclipse cycle this in many ways has been good news for Leos because this is at least in a nice angle to your Leo placement I can't see your other placements you could have had conflicts there but there's something about this cycle that's especially empowering and positive as it relates to your specific Leo placements. And the more Leo placements you have, the more chance for magic during the end of 2023 to the end of 2025. Now of that two year cycle, there are rhythms that build up every six months and then wane and then build up every six months and then wane. So in the spring of 2023, when they started or the fall for you all down under, they like came in with a boom. And then they kind of waned and we went into integrative mode. And then in the, the fall of 2023 or the spring for you all, um, down under, that's when they boomed again. And then it kind of waned. And now we're in a time as of January that we're in eclipse season again. Eclipse season puts a, a heat to the pot where the bubbling of possibilities that's constant for two years of the whole cycle starts to bubble up more. So you might have gotten information, news, about how the eclipses are going to manifest in January, stronger in February, bam in March, bam in April, and then waning down in May into June. So let's let's drill down into this now. The first eclipse is going to be on March 25th, and this is the five degree Libra eclipse. And the second one is a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Aries on April 8th. The first one, the March one, makes a 60 degree angle for Leos. The Aries one makes a 120 degree angle for for Leo. And this, sorry, I don't know if I just said Aries, but that's because it's in the sign of Aries. So basically we're working with a 120 degree angle for the Aries one for Leo. Then we're talking with a 60 degree angle for the um, Libra one with Leo. And those are the both, both the most favorable aspects in all of astrology, especially the trine. So we'll go into the April eclipse more in April but I just want to mention that it's the most favorable angle in all of astrology and the houses that are being aspected for you with these two eclipses have to do with movement and mobility. They have to do with education, learning, and teaching, and they have to do with expanding your horizons and adventures. 
Okay, so anything that gives you the vantage point of being on the top of a mountain and seeing a bigger picture, whether that's literally traveling and climbing a mountain, or whether that's, you know, figuratively being able to see from a viewpoint that is panoramic, that really gives insight and is inspiring, it's expansive, it's broad, you know, it's broadening to your horizons, and it's very solution oriented. So issues that you may have had, there may be solutions, um, you know, travel and traveling far and wide and traveling near as well. This is going to be a very busy time of movement and mobility. This can have to do with getting, you know, buying a car or going carless. You know, this can have basically big mobility changes. This can have to do with moving to a place where you don't need a car, like where there's public transport. This can have to do with you getting the car you've always wanted. And if you're making a big purchase like that, the dates up until March 20th are completely free from the contractual nonsense that Mercury retrograde runs. So that's good to know. Okay, so the Aries Libra eclipse cycle speaks to me versus we. That's universal for all the zodiac signs. And so you will be seeing things happening in your relationships, new relationships coming in, old relationships ending, people coming into your life, people leaving your life, anything having to do with changes in new chapters with your, you know, with your relationship where you're doing something different together. Um, and more autonomy, but also more togetherness. There's this, this pull of the balance of independence and interdependence, and you'll see things getting shuffled around in those arenas. To give some context as to how these things can manifest for you, let's look back to when they happened before. As I said, it started in 2023. You can think back to early last year. It happened later in 2023, okay? Starting to brew now in January when I'm recording this, and now think back to 2014 to 2016. Now think back to 2004 to 2006. Now think back if you are old enough to 1995 to 1997. And they're about round about seven-ish years. You know, you can look up an eclipse um, calendar and you can see the other dates and time that the, Li the Libra Aries eclipse cycle happened if you want to have more context and educate yourself. But I'm going far enough back to kind of give you an example. I know for myself, I had many milestones, moved out of the house, you know, finished college, you know, moved, started a whole new community and relationship, um, just everything, everything, there were very big milestones that happened and they had to do with personal relationships, autonomy, independence, interdependence. And that's like the general Zodiac story. But the one that's specific for Leo has to do with the teaching and the writing and the speaking and the mobility and the movement and your relatives including your in-laws and, you know, different countries and different cultures and different languages and immigration and all of these things. So all of that's happening. And it is why I'm calling the theme of this time flying lions time to soar because the chance for you to transcend a problem in your life or the chance for you to transcend a circumstance by shifting your consciousness. It's a really interesting thing to note. And I want to point this out that when and I'm going to use the retrograde as an example, but this is speaking about how perception changes things. When a, it looks like a planet is going backwards in its orbit from our perspective on Earth, it's called retrograde. It's not really going backwards. So it's not even really real, but it really affects us on Earth. It even affects us if we don't know that it's going backwards. So it's kind of a strange thing, right? So how things look to us changes how we experience it. So it actually changes the fabric of reality as we know it when we change our perspective and these energetics that you have with this eclipse cycle this is is giving you a chance to change your perspective one small tweak can change everything you might think oh i have to change everything i have to do these drastic things and throw some leo drama at it when really you change your mind and wow now everything has changed and you're you're still sitting in the same place you were you know that being said this also may be a time where you do actually make very big changes but you know the perspective is going to be the biggest thing. Okay, so if you want to know more about the eclipses, I'm going to refer you to my playlist. I'm actually working on, there are two places I'm going to send you to get more info and I'll tell you what to look up. I'm working on getting on my, um, my site, anniehelpsyou.com forward slash eclipses, an eclipse page that will show you what houses are being highlighted for you at the eclipse time. If, you, if that's not up yet, then you can go to YouTube, Annie Botticelli and go to the homepage and go to the Eclipse playlist and look for Eclipses in Libra, Eclipses in Aries, Eclipses in the ninth house or Sagittarius, and Eclipses in the third house or Gemini. 
and those four videos will give you lots of insight as to how you may experience these eclipses and how you can use them consciously. All right, so I've got a few dates I want to give you before we sign off here. As I said, there aren't a ton of aspects this month, but there are some very noteworthy ones. And one of those is a conflicted point in the days around March 9th. I'd say at least March 4th through March 14th, you'll be feeling this strongly. Even days before and after those dates, you might see manifestation from this. A square, Mars and Aquarius, um, squaring Uranus in Taurus. Okay, so look out for your physical body. Guard your head. Guard your circulatory system. Guard for people being reckless. You know, um, just general mayhem and uh, randomness and erratic behavior and jostling not welcome surprises so yeah you can use this energy to actively crack out of a matrix that's been holding you back and it can turn out that a point of conflict could allow you to do that so there's always that possible shiny ray of sun in that but it is something to be aware of because it can be pretty nasty and i want you to know about it We've got three great aspects with Venus. Venus, my grandma Marge, who would give me a kiss, a meatball, a compliment, some money, and take me in her cozy home. To, her, to me, she's Venus. And I always think of her when I think of Venus aspects. So the days around March 1st, March 24th, March 28th, days around before and after those dates, we can get some kisses from Venus. If you want more details about the Venus dates and aspects and what you can expect from them, as well as my whole write-up for March 2024 and every other month, always posted early, you can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your email um, and name in there. You'll get a welcome letter. You may have to find it in social or promo or whatever, spam. Sometimes things get put too. In that welcome letter, there's also an archive link where you can look at everything that I've sent recently that's relevant for that time because I send things out early. And you'll get weekly astrology education um, information that is very content rich to help you uh, make the most of the story possibilities. If you want to learn astrology, I am your girl. So you can see the options there at AnnieHelpsYou.com, including my astrology certification course. The astrology certification course is meant for anyone who wants to do astrology in a serious way, whether it's to earn money or not. If you want to do it just to help yourself and your family and friends, my system, you can see how I have a building system and that's how I work my education course. So I build layer upon layer upon layer to get you to proficiency. Astrology is a language and I'm a polyglot. So I know multiple languages well, and I apply my education for astrology as it's a language. It is a language and I take you as a building block up. So you can see that um, at AnnieHelpsYou.com, the astrology certification course, also called Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course. If you want to earn money as an astrologer, I also show you how to do that in the course. I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!